Um, first of all, I was surprised that it's been two decades since you, you were, your first film and your last film directed with Joe versus the Volcano. And I'm just wondering what took you so long because you do a wonderful job here. I don't know whether you've just had a very deep reluctance about Hollywood or whether... Well, you know, when I did Joe versus the Volcano, I was uh, I was working with Steven Spielberg and Kathy Kennedy and Frank Marshall, who are some of the best producers in Hollywood, and we got on very well, uh, and uh, have remained friendly to this day. But uh, it was made by Warner Brothers, and they drove me crazy. And I was in a hotel for the better part of a year, and I'm, that's not my preference. Uh, and uh, uh, when I went home, I really felt that I had to refine my feet as a writer and ground myself again. I wasn't interested in just sort of being successful for successfulness's sake. I, I, I really need to write about things that mean something to me. And sometimes it takes me a long time wandering in the wilderness to find those things. It took me a long time to find doubt. Well, I know when, you, when doubt debuted in Broadway that, that it, it instantly meant a lot to a lot of people and it ended up winning Pulitzer and, and Tony Awards and many other awards. And I, I don't know whether for you that there was always a kind of a, a determination that you would direct it, even though you hadn't directed a movie for a while that you just, I'm thinking, didn't like, like the idea of somebody else taking this away from you. It was uh, it was uh, very simple, the way that it happened. Uh, Scott Rudin is a big movie producer in, in New York. He, he was one of the producers of the play, and uh, somebody else directed the play. I couldn't do it because we were doing three shows at once. I was doing three plays at the same time, so I'd run back and forth among the rehearsals. But after we did the play, Scott came to me and he said, I think this should be a film, and I think you should direct it. And I said, I think so, too. But it's sometimes it's not until a knock comes at the door that you say, come in. I know that for some people who wouldn't know that the, the plot line itself, it's 1960s, it's Bronx, it's the Catholic school, and the, the, the head sister, played by Meryl Streep's sister, Aloysius, decides on, on, on a conflicted Judas, tells her sister uh, uh, Francis, or Sister James. What's sister the, James. Sister James. Tells her that she believes Father Flynn may have been too personal or too close to one of the students there. Is this something that you felt... A, it does reflect our times that the, 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 this issue is very, very deeply kind of uh, affecting the Catholic Church, but I don't know whether you hoped or felt that something like this would, would have a positive effect or whether you felt, I, I don't know if there's any kind of issues for your own personal sort well, of... You know, the, the, the church school, the Catholic church school that I went to is part of my personal autobiography as opposed to sort of general, some kind of general experience of the Catholic Church. It was very specific to this place in the East Bronx, uh, and uh, uh, I'm not, I wasn't interested, interested per se at all in the church scandals or in judging the church, but I was very interested in conveying what the experience of being in a little church school in the Bronx was at that time, because I think that's something that's of, of more interest to people, is just tell me, just tell me what it was like, and I'll draw my conclusions. Uh, and I'm, I very much respect the audience and don't really have any desire to tell them what to feel or think about the Catholic Church or anything else much, for, uh, for that matter. I set the story in 1964. It was a time on the cusp of great change. And that was the thing that was the more interesting to me, that some people are resisting the idea of change and some people are embracing it. Uh, and, uh, and whether or not uh, that's a good idea to embrace it or to run away from it or fight it. It is a wonderful piece of work, and, and without trivialising it, I guess for some people the moral of the story is you should never take an altar boy up the rectory. I think that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wonder if um, the, the trick you played with Brian F. O'Byrne, who, who was in the original uh, stage production, and then with Philip Seymour Hoffman, a whisper to let them know the truth, because uh, we never quite know, and that's the wonderful thing, that there's always this power play going on. W was that something that, that you knew from the start, that you wouldn't tell Meryl Streep, you wouldn't tell Amy Adams the exact truth, so therefore they'd have this tension? None of their, none of their business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can never know the truth of another human being. You can't know what's going on in their heart, and you can't know what's going on in their soul, and you never will, no matter how many tears run down their face while they tell you the truth. You can't know that. You can have your assumptions. You can only go so far. And certainly I wanted Meryl and Amy to have that experience, to be playing from that place, because that's the reality of what it is to be alive. When you're talking to somebody, you're trying to read them. You may even think that you are reading them, but you may be illiterate when it comes to them. And finally, given the success, uh, that, that the great reviews this has received, and, and it'll do well at the box office, I'm sure, around the world, that, I don't know if that's changed your feelings towards filmmaking, whether you feel, well, I'm, I'm back in there, or whether this is well, a one-off. I would, I would direct a film again. You know, I mean, it was, there was very good reasons, as far as I was concerned, for stepping away, and very good reasons for stepping back. But uh, it's an interesting art form, and I like to work in it.
Rock and roll. I've been giving the friendly finger. Very nice to talk to you, sir. <laughs> nice to talk to you. I hope you forgive that dread.